Charles might just be a bit grumpy from jet lag. I even went out for a whiskey with a special gift, but he wasn't having it. Wish I kind of knew what part of the world we were in, because we've had like people speaking French, and we've had people... It's been weird. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't happen to be the Papunio for the Harmony Ring, would it? Oh, hey! She's got it! Gimme, 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 uh, gimme! Wait, do you not have it? Ah, oh, dang it. <coughs> so wait, you'll have, you'll have passed it on to... Oh, you did pass it on to Chelsea. Oh, dang it. Try giving it to a couple of comedians who seem to be frantically searching for it anyway, but they wouldn't listen to me. Wait, that's not going to be uh, Bishop and Thingy, is it? Bishop and Rook, is it? Oh, right, good. Oh, thank God you didn't give it to them. <laughs> give so much nice for a long time. If you ask me, he was far more deserving of it than those two. So I'd have to keep searching. Well, at least you didn't give it to Bishop of Rook. That's that's the good thing. If it was someone that actually deserved it, fair enough. I'll I'll believe you. Okay. So I, I'm not entirely sure how the how this things like happened. Uh, squirrel thinks that we've missed a hint coin. Where where have we missed a hint coin? Like, is it in the windows? In the in the chim chimney? In the Durgan? Nothing in the Durgan? Nothing in the Durgan. Anything over there? Yes, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Squirrel! <laughs> Squirrel, you're a pretty cool guy. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad I have you here to, uh, to tell me when, when I'm missing stuff. So, okay, let's have a look around. Should we... Like, what am I supposed to be doing now? Before the wedding, I pass upon you once a married man with a daughter. Is that that's I don't I don't know who that's gonna be. <laughs> They've bought all the Paponios. <laughs> I need to come around to the idea of going many as possible. I still have my doubts, what's such to say any four of them is just a souvenir? I like that brook, with this many eggs, how can you not have the real one? Paponio power So I can't believe that woman in the hotel for trying to find that cheaper and station off on us. Who does she think we are? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've talked to so many people now, but we still no way to know where the egg could be. I think we're almost there, Luke. I say we just need one more piece of information we'll be able to work it out. How are we going to do that? We really so close to working it out. Okie dokie. So we have to solve... We have to solve it now. No, we don't have to solve it now. We need more information! How are we going to find more information? Uh, let's just kind of have a wander around. I need to find the beach walkway. Is that back here? No, wait, that's up that's, uh, that's this way, isn't it? So is this going to be the place? What are you doing here, Benny? <laughs> I see this upon your doors. It's got your eyes. I just the taste. <laughs> and your choice of hat is very bed dapper. For the future! Uh, I want one! It looks so cute! Look at him! The quality of craftsmanship is so, uh, is so nice. Miranda! Back from Arcade Dump Shannon's always more where that came from. Actually, this time I wanted to ask you something about something else. About Harmony. Uh, so that's what you're looking for. So you know something? Oh, right, she had the troop upon you for a little while, but she doesn't say anymore. Wow, everyone's had, everyone on this island's had the troop upon you for some time. They must have, like, run out of people to give it to eventually. Can you tell us anything about the person who gave it to you? It was a regular customer at my stall, you could say they were very fond of swimwear. That's gonna be. Oh, that's, uh, that's thingy. Uh. J Javia. Javia. H Javia. One of, one of those. <laughs> Uh, since you have such a I'll tell you this, it was someone who got married very recently. Oh, is that, is that gonna be... That's gonna be Chelby's wife then, I guess. Hmm. Upon you is, upon you does. You must have passed it on to him. Oh no, she passed it on to... God, I have no idea. <laughs> I think it was passed on to everyone who had the egg recently, and we still have no idea. I can't manage to work it out. No. 
As I was told initially, the ownership of the egg changes according to a pattern. If we lay out all the information we've gathered thus far in front of us, we should be able to construct the whole picture. Okay. Am I supposed to have been able to work it out so. Yeah. Because I'm just sat here like, la la la. The game will work it out for me. <laughs> Let's learn the information and work out the rules concerning how the egg is passed around. Okay. We've heard a lot of stories today, common link between stories. Now one person we met told us exactly who they gave to the egg to. The details they did provide were certainly sufficient to solve the mystery. Let's consider them now. Alright. How's this gonna work? So what do we know? After both put on the right track, we obtained information about the egg from six people, three male, three female. Martine passed it on before her wedding to a married man who thought fondly of his daughter. Miranda gave it to somebody married, didn't she? Somebody married that's fond of his daughter. I don't know. Miranda also gave it to someone married, didn't she, as a gift, and she thought we got it for a customer, I think. Okay, common theme. Um I don't know. <laughs> Customers? Uh, that's, <sighs> that's, that's. That means. No, you're wrong, you idiot! How dare you! I don't, I don't get it. I told the of marital status is kind of the same thing. Uh, Miranda did indeed say she received next from customer. Same can't really be said for Martine. Like, sometimes customers, sometimes it's what marital status. Yay! Marital status crops up in both accounts. Uh, I'd say that single, pa single people could pass the egg on to someone married, and vice versa. Okay, that's a bit arbitrary and weird, but okay. <laughs> there's nothing to disprove this in what we've considered thus far, but I believe there's more to pattern than that. So let's summarise the male accounts, and only those from Javier and the two Torchwood agents to get a better picture. Javier possibly gave his egg to a girl his daughter's age. We also know the married woman attempted to give the Torchwood men the egg. Okay. Uh, what connects Javier's story to the Tarja Men story? Is that going to be... Ge oh wait, genders, because they've always... They've always swapped like male, female. Yay! <laughs> Does that have anything to do with the fact that the X was always offered to someone of the opposite gender? After all, Javier seemed very worried that his daughter might end up passing it to some sleazy bachelor. So where do we stand now? Okay, second rule. Can pass it on to someone of the opposite gender. So it has to be opposite gender and married or unmarried. Wait, so it, it has to always go to like. I don't know. <laughs> if I had the egg, I would not be able to give it to either of you, but not to Luke. So a boy can only give the egg to a girl, a girl to a boy. Almost, but not quite. If we consider Amelie's account, you see, we run into a problem. <coughs> okay, she would have been able to give the egg to any one of us. It's because Emmy is secretly a guy, and so is Aurora. Whoa, mind has been super blown. <laughs> what would have made it possible for Emily to give any one of the, us the egg? Which one of the rules did Ma Emily have to follow? So are we say that oh, Emily's married. Yes. So it's either rule. Okay, so you have to pass it to someone of either of the opposite gender. Or of the opposite marital status. Or both. <laughs> as long as either one of the two rules was fulfilled. She's married, she knew I wasn't. And she knew Luke and Aurora were too young to be. Okay. <laughs> if the person you wish to give the egg to is of the opposite gender of or marital status, then you can pass it on. Maybe so, we still haven't worked out who has the egg. I do you remember Emily saying she passed it on to Mount Lunch? But we don't know when she went out to eat. Okay. <laughs> so we need to ask one where that was before we continue. Oh, of course, Leighton, Leighton knows everything. <laughs> Let's try to determine who held the egg and in which order by lining them up. Wherever there is logic, a solution falls closer behind. Okay, so these are all the people on the island. Um, Emily, Benny, Bud, Rook, Martine, Javier, Miranda, Bishop. I'm pretty sure... Okay, Rook and Bishop never had it. So we can ignore them. Uh, I don't like. Could we not? Can we not see? Okay, Martine's husband proposed with the Poponio. Who is Martine's 
husband. Javier. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you're going to do those your cakes. You've got to pepper from someone in swimwear. So that's that's going to be Javier, right? Yeah, Javier will have given it to Miranda. I don't know what order that's going to be in, but whatever. Uh, Passed on to a man at lunchtime. Receive a from a patron in his bar. Uh, her husband proposed with the Poponio and she gave it to a family man. Who's a family man? Is Javier a family man? Okay, if that's the case... Uh, who is Martine's husband? Bud, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. But right, Anneli doesn't have it now. Let's let's just let's assume that doesn't matter. Pass it on to a man at lunchtime. That's gonna be Bud, right? I actually don't know. No, Bud must have had it like before, right? Hang on, hang on. Martine got it from her husband. We don't know who her husband is, so let's assume she's the start of the chain. And then she passed it on to From a woman who just moved to the island. Yeah, that's got to be Martine. Uh, gave it to a woman his daughter's age. Young woman, yeah, Miranda, that makes sense. Got it from someone in swimwear, that's Javier. Gave it to a married female customer, that's going to be Emily. Uh, Passed on to a man at lunchtime, that's going to be Bud. That's... Does that make sense? I thought Bud said he didn't have it. He gave it to... A page? I thought Bud gave it to Javier, actually. Oh, I don't know, let's try it. <laughs> Your chain of events matches my own. Hey, hey, I'm correct. <laughs> but he's able to say that the egg was handed on in this order. Which means what was the last of these people to receive the egg? Okay, if that's the solution. <laughs> Bud currently has the egg. I I was kind I kinda of thought that might be the case, considering Bud was the one that first told us about it, so we've got done this whole roundabout thing for absolutely nothing. But he always refused to sell to again. Stone too, maybe because he gave it to nobody. <laughs> but only mention received the upon you. But he didn't say anything about giving it away. That's the twist all along. I knew it. I knew you'd have to go back to him. Let's go back to Bud's Barn Grill. Freaking Bud. <laughs> what a douche. He's probably going to like make us do a puzzle as well. <sighs> go on. Tell me if you got if you got it. Yeah, we figured it out, man. You're the current holder of the trooper, you. <laughs> that, although that doesn't really that doesn't really like hold logically. He could have just given it to literally anybody, and we wouldn't know. <laughs> okay, I've been looking for the perfect person to give a point to, and then you came with that glazed sad look. I guess thinking if anyone needed harmony it was you. I decided to have just the ponyo, thank you. <laughs> We're kind of missing the point. We need the Papagno, but its humble beginnings were far from happy. The man who found it, Eduardo Papagno, was at the end of his rope. Oh, really? He'd hit rock bottom and wanted to idle away his days as a hermit, so he set off for some old crumbling ruins. And I guess there are some Azerac ruins on this on this island then, and that would be where it was found. The Papagno was found was based on was the basis of tourist merchandise. Hooray! <laughs> Point is in the linear signs you gotta look forward. Happiness might be waiting just around the corner, or just in the next ruins. Don't take the Poponio just because you want it. Take it because you want to be happy. And we got the first egg. Well, the second egg, technically. Because we decided to go for the second one first, because I don't like doing things in order. I don't like I don't like being sensible. People in hand always greet with a smile. I find it odd at first, but I think I understand now. Awesome. So that's our very first egg. And is that kind of a solved mystery now? Paponio started, the Paponio tradition started with a man named Eduardo Paponio. At the low point of his life, he found the Azran egg, and it brought him great joy. He started the Paponio passing tradition in the hope of bringing happiness to those around him. The people of Sangrio appear to have fallen for the legend of the Paponio rather than the Azran egg itself. So, uh, basically, we're just going to kind of take the Paponio away from the island now, and no one in that island is ever going to be happy ever again. Go around destroying people's lives. That sounds like the job of a professor. 
Uh, so, however, doing this unlocks a couple of puzzles that we can find. So let us head back to the hotel up here, the Hilltop Hotel, because I do believe there is a puzzle. Well, hello again. Hello, my team. What are you doing here? Did you manage to book a room? Uh, the truth is, I was hoping to book a particular suite, but the chef just said it's already booked for this week. That's very unfortunate. We have level. But when there are so many people coming in, going in all the time, how can they even keep track? Yeah, we can just kind of come in and go, come in and leave whenever we feel like it. Puzzle number 61, worth 30 pick rounds, be my guest. I would burst out the song, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> Take a look at this hotel's guest room, guest book. You see that 30 guests checked out on the 28th, and 60 guests checked in. 25 guests checked in there that night. On the 27th, 19 guests checked in. 11 stayed in. Uh, 12 and 6. Uh, oh dear lord. <laughs> uh, checked out. Okay, 13 checked out on the 28th. 16 checked in. 25 guests stayed out that night. Okay. That was the night of the 28th. <coughs> so basically, if we just kind of bring that up, that up on top top screen. We can divide this into sections, so we've got 28, 27, 26, 25, and we want to find the area of the data 24. So the data 24, 28, there were 25 people, but there were, um, five that was after 30, 50 checked in and 30 checked out. So that's overall plus 3. So there'll be 22 on that night. On the 27th, there uh, are 19 out and 11 in, so that's minus 7. That's, yeah, that's minus 7. Which will make that 29 on 26, I think. Is that right? I don't have any more people. 26, 12 guests checked out and 18 checked in, uh, so that's plus 6. So that'll be 23. Uh, 25th, 15 out and 14 in, so that's minus 1. So that'll be 24, right? 24. Have I logic? Or did, was that complete fail? Was that, was that just complete nonsense? That was just complete nonsense! Yay! <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, this puzzle would be much easier if you used the memo. I was just using memo, fu memo function, but. I'm guessing somewhere I mixed up a plus or a minus or something or. something. 13, uh, 28, 16 in. Goodness. So put and put that on as well. Oh uh, yeah, plus 3. Uh, minus. Oh, that's 8, dang it! I love my mistake, but I'm an idiot. Plain and simple, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing that you can possibly say on that, so it should be 25, right? Oh, no, no, you're sure, no. Let's check the rest, uh, yeah, it's gotta be plus 6, that's gotta be minus 1. Uh, attempt 2, 25. Let's try this. Yay! <laughs> Puzzles are a Can't tell with Sycamore. His third, his third frame of animation looks really, uh, sad. 25 guests stayed there on the 24th, the 24th of December, in fact, which means there may have been another visitor at some point as well. Yeah, someone probably broke in and stole all the presents, so... If you want to call that a guest, then, you know, feel free. Some receivers always need to be booked, but I'm sure there are others that stay empty. It's very frustrating. <laughs> you don't suppose the empty ones are a haunted, do you? Well, that's the only thing that makes sense. Why well, reduce the price to accommodate more customers? High prices are the best way to attract the nouveau riche. Extravagant waste of money. So yeah, we got another another puzzle to do on Silent. Uh, although some wait, it's very suave and passionate gentleman in pink. Who would that be? I get the feeling it's a reference, but I I I, I wasn't really paying that much attention. <laughs> oh well, whatever. Everyone's happy. I've got my egg. I don't need to pay attention once I've got my egg. I just need to pay attention for the uh, for the main, main storyline. So hey! You also have a puzzle for me. How can you stand the heat in all those layers? <laughs> Does he do more stretches? No, he actually wasn't stretching when we came here this time. For the very first time. Puzzle number... 62. Worth 35. Baker Rats, nose to nose too. This is... Oh, it's another, it's another seal wand. Oh, he's not against the seal one before, isn't he? Uh, we need to get that heart over to the left. That's... See, that's always going to be the more difficult thing, I think, about these puzzles. Is getting the first pieces in the right place. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um... 
Oh, you actually can't undo either, so whatever. <laughs> Fortunately, it gives you like plenty of uh, plenty of swaps, like right. way plenty I'm of swaps, way 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 more than you need. If I was doing the right number of swaps, then I can tell you how to fail that because I, I, I definitely wasted one there. But the puzzle would also be a lot harder. And now the show can get started once again. <laughs> and that's going to be it for the island, I think. In fact, that is going to be it for the island. We've done everything here. Uh, we've solved the mysteries. Maybe there'll be another mystery from... Uh, maybe there'll be more puzzles unlocked and maybe there'll be more mysteries from the World Times later on. But for now, we have the first... We have an egg. And uh, we can go off and start looking for the others. I'm actually going to stop this recording session here, though, so... Uh, <laughs> if I have to make this terrible puns after each step of our jungle journey, maybe I'll hold on to it a little while longer. Good plan. Punish him for the puns. <laughs> Punish. Get on. Damn it, I'm not getting the egg. You need not worry either way, as I believe the people of the Harmony Ring were intended for Aurora to hold on to the egg. A wise decision if there ever was one. I was disappointed you weren't able to visit the ruins, though. Hermie seems very well acquainted with our actions, Raymond. He's been spying on us. <laughs> That's, that's creepy, dude. That's just creepy. He's, he's definitely a bad guy. Very fortunate that Raymond is aiding our calls. I feel he would make a powerful enemy if crossed. He's definitely a bad guy. Professor Lace and Professor Sigmore, something's going back to me about the Azran. Good tidings indeed. But this facility now lies under San Sangrio. It was used to harness the power of the moon and soothe nature's temper. Okay. It could be used to control the seas. The Azran were pretty freaking technologically advanced. The facility was closed before our civilization reached its peak. Perhaps it had already come to its purpose. That's all I can recall. It's quite easy. So the calm, luxurious shores of Sangrio are in part provided by the Azran. Thank you, Aurora. You're welcome. It's nice to be able to share these memories. An ancient facility hidden underwater. I'm almost tempted to go deep sea diving and see it for myself. Well, that's cool. Meanwhile, though, let's just head off in the Bo Bostonius. Because we are finished on this island, and we could go and take on one of the other four areas. Oh wow, is this actually going to be like... <laughs> Chelmy. Chelmy and Betty. Is this going to be like a, a mid-chapter mid save? Let's have a see. The Bostonius. So that's going to be it. I'm going to do another recording session at some point. Uh, new episode of Nines of the World Times, I guess we'll start off by looking at those. New episode, I guess we'll start off by looking at that. And next time, should I leave it open to popular vote? Nah, I'm probably going to record the next part before I go on anyway, so I guess we'll uh, we'll use the the whole D6 method again to decide whether to go to the jungle! An untamed jungle that's home to many just underscore species. It's a shame, it's delight, brain pain, a mystery to the world. Oh, uh, We've already been to Sangrio. Oh, A desert town built by brave pioneers. Its hard, hardy residents are involved in a constant battle against their harsh surroundings. It's in Monte Dor. Oh, on the hillside. Rustic ideal. Known for its strong winds, its self reliant population makes a living from farming the flush draining pastures. Or to the walled city of Minas Tirith. It's not quite Minas Tirith, but you know. <laughs> Since it ties the legend of a great phoenix, high walls surround it, and the few people who remain there live to guard its secrets. So, what are those four is going to be next time? Bet you can't guess which. <laughs> See you guys. be as bent as I think he is. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's, that's just homophobic. Come on now. Come on now. I, I didn't expect this game to stoop that low. No, no, I, I can't condone this. I, can, I cannot condone this episode.